Today we'll be doing a full smoke alarm replacement and upgrade in a residential house. The homeowner said that their current smoke alarms are too sensitive to cooking smoke and the occasional smoke from their wood stove. Added to this, the current smoke alarms sometimes randomly go off when there's no smoke to be found. I checked the date tag on the back of one of the units and it's almost 10 years old. Folks, almost every smoke alarm manufacturer, as well as the National Fire Protection Association, recommends you replace your smoke alarms every 10 years. This ensures that problems such as these are fixed, the sensors are fresh and working, and that you know you have the latest safety equipment and recommendations in your home. Now the question is, with the hundreds of different smoke alarm models on the market, which one should I get? That all depends on what you're looking for. Is your current smoke alarm system standalone or hardwired? If your current system is hardwired, I recommend replacing your hardwired units with new hardwired units. If your current smoke alarm system is standalone, meaning they are not interconnected wirelessly or with wires in the back of the units, then I recommend replacing your units with wirelessly interconnectable alarms. Or if you don't have the budget for that, then at least modern standalone alarms. Another question to ask is do you like where the current smoke alarms are placed? Currently, new construction homes are required to have smoke alarms placed on every level of the home, inside and outside every bedroom. I absolutely agree with this. I personally recommend on top of these requirements to feel no pain in adding a smoke alarm where you think one is necessary. So if you have smoke alarms in all the required places and you feel there's a significant fire risk in the basement storage furnace room, even if there's one not required in that room, don't hesitate to put one in. It might also benefit you to note that some manufacturers have special alarms that allow you to add wirelessly interconnectable alarms to existing hardwired systems. Also, it's better to have your smoke alarm on the ceiling and away from airflow, such as fans and vents. Why? Because smoke rises to the ceiling, and that's where you want your smoke alarm. You also don't want the smoke being blown away from the alarm, because then it might not go off. The last thing to know before choosing a smoke alarm is the type of sensor. There are two types of smoke alarm sensors, ionization and photoelectric. Ionization sensors respond faster to fires with smaller smoke particles. These come from fires with greater amounts of flame. Since these sensors are cheaper to make, you'll see them in the majority of homes. But don't forget about photoelectric sensors. These sensors respond faster to larger smoke particles, found more commonly in slow smoldering fires. These sensors also cause less nuisance alarms. So this technology better knows the difference between cooking smoke and real smoke. I recommend getting smoke alarms with both ionization and photoelectric technology built in. That way, no matter what type of fire happens, you'll know they'll sound. However, these special units can be pricey. If these special units don't fit your budget, then at least install both technologies throughout your home. Both ionization and photoelectric fires can easily start in your home. If you fail to have both technologies in your home, the honest truth is, you may be dead before the smoke alarm will even go off. Smoke alarms can also come with extra features such as escape lights. With these features, it's really up to you on what you want. The house I'm working on currently has five hardwired smoke alarms. Three of them are in bedrooms, two of them are in hallways and common areas outside of the bedrooms. For me, I'm very happy with the location of each alarm, so it's just a matter of replacing them. I've decided to replace the two smoke alarms outside the bedrooms with the First Alert BRK7010B hardwired photoelectric detectors. For this house, the alarms in these locations most commonly cause the nuisance alarms from the cooking smoke and the occasional smoke from the wood stove, so photoelectric technology is best used here. In the bedrooms, I'll be installing the First Alert BRK SC9120B hardwired smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Yep, these alarms also have a built-in carbon monoxide detector. Carbon monoxide alarms can be a whole different video topic, but yes, it's also important to take this poisonous gas into consideration. Now it's time to replace the alarms. For hardware units such as these, if you're not comfortable with electricity, maybe it's time to call an electrician, or at least someone who has more experience. new alarms are installed, I feel very confident that they'll do a fine job protecting the occupants of this house. Don't forget to test your smoke alarms, especially when you first install them, that way you know they're working. With many units, the test button will only test the alarm circuitry. I also recommend getting canned smoke and testing each unit to ensure both the alarm and the sensor are working. Thank you for watching this video, please subscribe and have a great day.